So we were talking about wave aspects of light. I talked about interference, diffraction and then polarization of light. There are some more things which I want to talk in this chapter and uh, today we will be doing three topics. One is scattering of light. Other is uh, optical activity. And the third is by refringence. Scattering of light you must be aware of from school days you know this. In the morning everything is lighted uh, before even before sunrise you find that okay everything is lighted and you, you know that okay this is the morning. So how everything becomes lighted? Sun rises in east so light comes from the east only but uh, you stand in open field face towards west or north or south or any corner or up, you find everything is, is lighted. Light is coming to your eyes from all directions. So how is that coming? That is because of scattering. In atmosphere, you have molecules, oxygen molecules, nitrogen molecules, carbon dioxide molecules, water vapor and what not. And when light falls on these atoms, part of the light scatters in different directions. Atom is a very tiny one. The size would be a fraction of nanometer, whereas light will have a wavelength of a few hundreds of nanometers, 400 nanometer to 700 nanometers, that is the range of visible light. So, it is a very tiny particle for light, but still it affects very much and that is because light is waves and electromagnetic waves. It has electric field which oscillates, which changes with time and atoms have electrons. So, this electric field interacts with the atom, creates a dipole moment if it is not there and then uh, aligns it. And as electric field itself is uh, oscillating, this dipole moment of atom or molecule also oscillates. An oscillating dipole like an antenna, it uh, emits radiation and that is what we call scattered light. And that comes out with its own uh, laws of uh, electrodynamics. If uh, the dipole moment oscillates in z direction, there is a particular pattern of scattered intensity, angular distribution. Mostly things come in the perpendicular plane. So those, those laws are obeyed and we have light everywhere. And that is uh, uh, also the reason of blue color of sky if you are seeing in the direction opposite to the sun. Because when the light gets scattered by such tiny particles, size much smaller than the wavelength of light, then it is highly wavelength dependent. And the intensity of the scattered light will be in any direction, it will be proportional to 1 by lambda 4. That is called Rayleigh scattering. So, shorter wavelengths, the blue end, the violet, blue, green, that end, that scattering will be more and the red, orange, high wavelength range, that scattering will be small. And therefore, when you see in open away on the other direction than the sun, then what you receive is the scattered light and scattered light will have more of this blue end and that is why sky appears blue. Okay, so here we have another very interesting experiment. We have uh, water and slight soap dissolved into it and we have this laser pointer. I will be rotating this laser torch 
on its own axis so that the beam will remain the same but you focus on how its intensity changes as I rotate the laser. Okay, So, now you are seeing the laser beam and uh, monitor the intensity as I am rotating the torch. I am rotating the torch and you see what is happening to the intensity. The laser torch is being rotated about its own axis. So, the beam remains same, uh, slow. So, this is uh, you see the intensity has gone down. Okay. Rotate it further slightly and intensity is going down further. Yes, stop there and see how low is the intensity. It's the same laser beam, same direction, same water, incident at the same angle of incidence, everything is same. The only thing I have rotated this cylindrical torch about its own axis. Now the camera is seeing that beam from top. Previously it was from side, now it is from top. And we will again rotate the laser beam and you look at the intensity. Yes, please rotate. We are rotating and you see what is happening to intensity. It is going down. Rotate further. Rotate further is minimum, very, very small intensity. Rotate and now the intensity is again increasing. So, as we are rotating the torch, it is again increasing and now it has become quite bright. Rotate further, little bit. going down, started going down, more, more, very small intensity now, very small intensity, almost negligible. So, that is how. So, the intensity of this laser beam in water as seen from top is also changing as I rotate that this uh, laser, the torch. Okay. So, you have seen the intensity variation. Now, why that intensity varies as I rotate this laser torch? Because the beam is going in the same direction. It is entering water in the same direction. It comes out from the same direction. As we had shown earlier, the light that is coming out of this laser pointer or laser torch is largely polarized. That means, if the beam is coming out in one direction, the electric field perpendicular to the direction of propagation, but it has a fixed direction and that direction is fixed with respect to this instrument. So, when I rotate this torch about its own axis, everything inside rotates and therefore, the electric field also rotates. So, what happens? Let us say the beam is going and electric field is in vertical direction. If the electric field is in vertical direction, the dipole moments will also start oscillating in vertical direction. And if that happens, the radiation from that oscillating dipole will be more in the perpendicular plane. And therefore, if I see from the side, I will get more intensity. And if I see from top, I will get less intensity because a dipole does not radiate much along that direction of the dipole moment. But perpendicular direction, yes, it does with larger intensity. When I rotate the torch, the electric field also rotates and if the electric field becomes parallel to this uh, horizontal direction, if this uh, electric field becomes horizontal, what will happen? the electric dipole moments will oscillate in this horizontal direction. And therefore, if you see from side, the intensity will be much lower. It radiates more in the perpendicular plane. And so, if you see from the top, the intensity will be maximum. Now, our next topic is optical activity.
we have done this scattering now this optical activity there are certain kinds of molecules which chemists call chiral molecules they are not equivalent to their mirror image and so on so if you have a material having those molecules and send send a linearly polarized light through that material the linearly polarized light remains linearly polarized but its electric field direction rotates as you go along the length of that material now this type of materials are called optically active material because they interact with light and make this change in the direction of the electric field from the common materials that we use in our daily life sugar is optically active so if you have sugar solution and you pass light through this solution the light is linearly polarized to start with as it travels in the solution this direction of electric field or direction of polarization it will gradually rotate it will gradually change so we will see that in this experiment so here is the apparatus we have a laser source giving red laser at the bottom you have this uh, graduated angular scale and there is a tripod on which we have placed a glass plate and on that a glass tumbler and this polarizer sheet this is that glass tumbler and this is the polarizer sheet on the sheet we have put this uh, pointer we have fixed this pointer with the sheet so that you can read the position of this uh, sheet on this graduated scale so at this moment the this tumbler is empty laser is going through this and then through this uh, polarizer and is falling on the roof so let us look at the spot on the roof so you can see the spot and now we will be rotating this polarizer sheet you can rotate the tumbler only and see when this intensity is minimum so rotate it is increasing increasing it is increasing go back go back go back go back go back yeah now it is decreasing slowly go back yeah here it is here it is this is this is minimum this is almost gone now let us see where is this pointer so read the pointer here what it reads the pointer is reading 107 so that is this position now we will be putting sugar solution in this glass tumbler that's it very good now the laser is going through the sugar solution then the polarizer and then on the roof so let us see the intensity of this spot so now rotate this uh, polarizer to make this intensity minimum yeah rotate yes it is going down 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 almost gone rotate further rotate 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 yes it is again coming back so go back go back go back go back go back go back this is the minimum intensity so let us see what does our pointer say Hundred and twenty-one. It was hundred and seven, and now it is 
121. So the electric field vector has rotated by about 14 degrees when it goes through this length of sugar solution of this particular concentration that we have made. This is optical activity. The rotation depends on the length of the solution and also on the concentration of the solution. So, we had done scattering, we had done optical activity and now we will be doing an experiment based on what we call birefringence. So, we have done this and now it is this. You all know when light goes from one transparent medium to another transparent medium, refraction takes place, the speed of light changes. Now, for uh, the materials which are optically isotropic, that means all directions in the material are equivalent for light, the speed of light is same whatever way it moves. But there are some materials for which this isotropy is not there and speed of light depends on several other things. One variety is where the speed of light depends on the electric field direction and that is why it becomes a, a wave aspect. Our very familiar object this is cellophane tape which we use for uh, packing things and uh, uh, closing an envelope and other things or sticking things together has this property. Now, first let me do an experiment and then uh, we will talk more about it. I have these two polarizers and uh, several glass slides. So, on one of the glass slides, I will put a layer of this cellophane tape. So, I am doing that. So, I take a layer and put this layer of tape on this uh, glass slide. Okay. So, it is one single layer of tape, you would not be able to see the tape, but perhaps you can see a wrinkle here. So, one layer of tape is here. Now, if I look through this tape, this glass slide towards some light source, light will get transmitted. I put it between these polarizers. So, one polarizer is here another polarizer parallel to it. So, my glass slide is now between two polarizers which are parallel to each other. Perhaps you do not see much of exciting things. And now I am rotating this glass slide and see what happens. The glass slide is at some angle with the edges of this polarizer or these polarizers and you can see the color appearing in this slide. Rotate it further, the color becomes darker, it is bluish. Rotate it further and now the color is fading away. It is almost becomes transparent no color and now this is a perpendicular orientation. So, remember this color at 
some angle of 45 degrees or close to that, you have a darkish bluish color. Now let me put one more layer of tape on this and see what happens. I am putting one more layer on that same glass slide. So now I have two layers of tape on this slide. Okay. You may not find much of difference, everything is very transparent apart from the fact that while sticking the tape on glass surface or on another tape surface, there are some wrinkles coming in, but never mind. So put it between the two polarizer sheets in parallel configuration. This is how it looks like. And now let me rotate and see the color and compare with what you had seen with one single layer. Done. Go for one more layer. Let us see what happens if I have three layers. I have put one more layer. So now you have three layers of this elephant tape on the glass slide. Bring it between the polarizers, already some color appears, okay. So start from here and rotate and see the color. This is greenish. With one layer it was bluish, two layers it was slightly yellowish, with three layers it is close to greenish. Transparent. No color. Greenish. Again, no color. Now, there are various other combinations possible. I had put one layer, two layer, three layer. You can do more layers and see. I had put it between parallel polarizers. You put it between perpendicular polarizers and see the colors. They will be different. Now, why these colors appear? That is because the tape is a birefringent material. If the electric field is along the length of this tape, the refractive index is different, the speed of light is different and if the electric field is along the width of the tape, the refractive index is different. Light is going perpendicular to the surface of the tape, so electric field will be in this plane, but then the electric field can be this way or this way or at some angle. So, if it is at some angle, if this is the electric field and you take two components, one along this direction and other along this direction, you can call it E1 here, you can call it E2 here. So, initially the electric field is this way, then you can think it as a combination of two linearly polarized light, one polarized in this direction, another in this direction and then the phase difference between these two is 0 and the resultant is 
again a linearly polarized light. But as it crosses the thickness of the tape, since the refractive indices are different, a phase difference will appear between the two components. The optical path traveled by this component will be n1 times t and that traveled by this component will be n2 t and so there will be an optical path difference n1 t minus n2 t and correspondingly you will have a phase difference which will be 2 pi over lambda n1 minus n2 and t. So depending on lambda there you will have different phase differences and correspondingly the light which is coming out will have a polarization which could be this way, which could be this way, which could be this way or that way or could be circular and so on. So different wavelengths will come out with different kinds of polarization states. And then when I am putting second polarizer to cut one particular component of vibration. So the entire spectral distribution of that light which comes out will be different for uh, different lambdas and that is the source of different colors appearing. 